You are welcome to this preview of Reversing Hermon, Section 6, The Watchers and Jesus Ministry. Learning Objectives By the end of this session, we shall be able to explain why Jesus expelled demons from humans, why he led his apostles up Mount Hermon, and why he conversed with Moses and Elijah when he was transfigured. Origin of the Ancient Giant On Angels and Giants, we read in Genesis chapter 6, When man began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were attractive, and they took as their wives any they chose. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterwards. On Angels and Giants, in 1 Enoch chapter 6, the watchers were, all of them, 200, who descended in the days of Jared onto the peak of Mount Hermon. And they called the mountain Hermon, meaning curse, because they swore and bound one another with a curse on it. Recall that the word curse has the same triliteral root, cherem, as Hermon. Cuneiform tablets from the Amorite kingdom of Mari in the first half of the second millennium BC in Mesopotamia. There were Amorite giants in Mesopotamia. Before the Exodus, we read in Genesis 15, they, the Israelites, shall come back here in the fourth generation, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. And after the Exodus, Amos chapter 2 said, It was I who destroyed the Amorites before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars, and who was as strong as the oaks. Now, when spies went into the land, they came back and gave this report. We were not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. All the people that we saw in it are of great height. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who come from the Nephilim. Remember, Nephilim is an Aramaic term for giants, that is, humans who are stronger and taller. Note the placement of the kingdom of Ammon and of Moab just below it. Esau ridded his regions of the Amorites, a people great and many, and tall as the Anakim. The people of Esau dispossessed them and destroyed them from before them and settled in their place, that is, east of the Jordan River. Anakim were a giant clan dwelling in Canaan, Mesopotamia, in ancient times. Here is an example of an ancient ceremonial bed made of wood with ivory decoration. One such bed is described in cuneiform tablets for the god Marduk in ancient Babel, or Uruk, also nine by four cubits. Only Og, the king of Bashan, was left of the remnant of the Rephaim. Behold, his bed was a bed of iron. Is it not in Rabbah, city of the Ammonites? Nine cubits was its length, and four cubits its breadth, according to the common cubit. That is, his bed, possibly his sarcophagus, measured thirteen by six feet, or four by two meters. This may have been a royal bed for cultic lovemaking. Here is a portion of the Tel Dan Stele, a victory monument set up by Aramean King Hazael in the 9th century BC, naming King Jehoram of Israel 
King Ahaziah of Judah, and the house of David. Baal was believed by many to be lord of dead Apocalo kings. King Ahaziah fell and lay sick. So he sent messengers telling them, Go inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover from this sickness. Many centuries later, the Lord Jesus would comment, They have called me the master of the house Beelzebul, same as Beelzebub. Baal, in his quality of Lord of the dead Apkalu kings, in Mesopotamia, the god Baal was called Baalzebul Aretz, that is, Prince Baal of the underworld, of the dead. The underworld being the place where demons and dead rulers must go to await their judgment. Jesus and evil spirits. Regarding the origin of evil spirits or demons, here is what 1 Enoch chapter 15 says. The giants who were begotten by the spirits and human flesh, their dwelling will be on the earth. Evil spirits they will be on the earth, and evil spirits they will be called. These spirits will rise up against the sons of man and against the women, for they have come forth from them. Now, Jesus used to expel demons from Gentiles. In Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, we read, They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes, that is, in Bashan. There met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. No one had the strength to subdue him. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. He cried out with a loud voice, Jesus, Son of the Most High God! Now Jesus expelled from him watcher spirits. The spirit said, I adjure you by God, do not torment me. And he begged Jesus earnestly not to send them out of the country. On the phrase, Son of the Most High, we shall see later Psalm 82. These were very strong spirits, suggesting that they were Nephilim. Nephilim spirits know their destiny as one of torment. And to be sent out of the country reminds us that these spirits rule in heavenly places, that is, in the sky over nations. They asked to go into a herd of pigs, whither Jesus sent them. The unclean spirits came out and entered the pigs, and the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the sea. Recall that pigs are unclean for Israelites, but this was Gentile territory. Notice the spirits have now been demoted. The pigs drowned, just as the spirits' divine human bodies had drowned in the great flood. Jesus also expelled evil spirits from Israelites. There was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus reverses Hermon. Regarding Mount Hermon in the Bashan Range near Caesarea Philippi. Psalm 68 had said, O mountain of God, mountain of Bashan, O many-peaked mountain, mountain of Bashan, why do you look with hatred, O many-peaked mountain, at the mount that God desired for his abode, yes, where Yahweh will dwell forever, that is, Mount Zion in Jerusalem. We shall return to Psalm 68. 
at the foot of the Bashan range was the city of Caesarea Philippi with its grotto of Pan, a pagan city near a mountain covered with pagan worship sites. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do you say that I am? Well, Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, Petros, and on this rock, Petra, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So, whatever you, Peter, bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, another term for the sanctuary of Pan was the gates of hell because of the great caverns that went down under the mountain. Now there are three current interpretations of what is meant by the phrase the gates of hell. The traditional view holds that this means persecution against Christians throughout church history, whereas many scholars hold that the grotto of Pan at Bashan near Caesarea Philippi is what Jesus meant. In any event, in ancient times and in amongst early Christians, they held this to mean Satan himself as Lord of the dead. And there are different views of what is meant by the rock. Roman Catholics pontificate that this means Peter being the first pope, if there be any such thing as a pope. Evangelicals generally hold that this means Peter's confession of Jesus as Messiah, whereas older Protestants used to cite 1 Corinthians 10.4, which says, Christ is that rock, though a different word for rock. Whereas in this context, it probably is a reference to Mount Hermon, which Jesus is about to reclaim for himself. In any event, the promise he made to Peter he gave to all of his apostles in chapter 18. I say to you, apostles, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Jesus and the Watcher Spirits Regarding the first nations established after the flood across the fertile crescent, we read in chapter 32 of Deuteronomy, when the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance, that is their land, when he divided mankind, he fixed the borders of the peoples according to the number of the sons of God, that is, the number of watchers. But Yahweh's portion is his people, Jacob, his allotted heritage, that is, the Israelites, by sons of God. Moses was referencing Genesis chapter 6 and Psalm 82. Now regarding the divine counsel, that is, Yahweh God, surrounded by his angels, we read in Psalm 82, God will take his place in the divine counsel. In the midst of the gods he holds judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? I said, you are gods, sons of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, like men, you shall die and fall like any prince. The watchers know this is their future. When Jesus was transfigured, according to Luke chapter 9, Jesus took with him Peter, John, and James, and went up on the mountain. As he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered, and his clothing became dazzling white. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah appeared in glory, talking with him 
about his departure, not his death, but his return to heaven. They saw him transfigured. A cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my Son, my Chosen One. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone with the three men. In what way did Jesus reclaim Hermon as his own? There are several implications of what was revealed. First, this was on the mountain, certainly the Bashan Range, probably Mount Hermon, because of what happened there. His appearance showed Jesus to be a human divine being, in that regard like the Nephilim of old. With him appeared two other human divine beings, we might call them divinized messengers or angels, in that regard similar to the watchers who had descended on Hermon centuries earlier. The voice is that of the Most High God. Jesus is the Son, that is, the one who was to inherit heaven and earth. Called the Chosen Ones, he now displaces the watchers, who must now listen to him. Watchers must obey Jesus, his apostles, and his Christians. This is why Jesus now empowers his church. Psalm 68 had said, You, Yahweh, ascended on high, leading a host of captives and receiving gifts among men. Paul paraphrases this verse when he says, When he, Jesus, ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. Why the difference? Well, in the psalm, it was Yahweh receiving tribute from rebellious humans, whereas in Ephesians, he gives gifts to equip his saints. That is, Jesus takes tribute away from the watchers, and he distributes it to his saints. Your assignment for next time is to read in Reversing Hermon, Chapter 7, The Watcher's Sin and Human Depravity, and then to visit our website, ReversingHermon.site.